I got second place at my locals Beelze Cup running Minervamon and Mervamon. You'll notice that I'm not running Loop, and that's partially because I think Loop is a very inconsistent deck. It's not something that's particularly stable, so I wouldn't really want to take that to um, any kind of serious tournament. I legitimately think if you took Loop to like an Ultimate Cup or something like that, you would not perform very well. Um, and you might wonder, well, if you think Loop is inconsistent, why are you running Eismon Scatter Mode? Well, Reason being is what you can do, turn one, Evo your Sunomon or whatever egg you're on into Ignitemon, right? And hard play Eismon. Your opponent is going to do whatever. On your turn, you move the Ignitemon out and you can just swing with the Ignitemon to pop your own Eismon to get the draw three trash. You set up your own filter. If your Ignitemon dies, so be it. If you happen to have uh, Mervamon in hand at that point, you can just digicross into the Merva. And play two bodies out for free. Uh, in addition, like you're gonna digit cross into her for eight, right? And you're gonna shove the ignite. So for seven cost total, you get out Merva and two other bodies, which is pretty high value, especially if both of them are level four, because that means you're getting a six and maybe two of these, right? If you put out more Eismon, well, hey, you're potentially getting more filter. Even if you don't crash the Eismon, you can digivolve it into Blue Merimon or Lady Devimon to get a draw two trash two. And again, Merva will give all of your retaliation cards, blocker, and rush, as well as your Digicross cards. So being able to play out Ignitemon from your trash as well is pretty good because this card, again, lets you pop your stuff to do stuff. Uh, you can use Ignite to pop your Minerva to trigger her own deletion effect while also removing a level 6 or lower Digimon from your opponent's board. So, yeah, you can, like, use the one attacking, pop her, pop something on your opponent's board, maybe bringing them down to two cards, thereby making her own deletion live, playing a Merva from your trash for free, digicrossing with the Ignite itself if it survives or dies, doesn't really matter, um, allowing you to get three bodies out on board for no cost, gaining a memory in the process. It's really good. I won games like that. Um, and there are some other alterations that you can make to this, but I do think that this list is relatively stable for uh, this purple-only format. I would honestly try playing this in the Ultimate Cup format that we have currently, where you're completely monocolor. If um, I had been able to sign up on time, and uh, this deck was also kind of made with the assumption that the main decks I would see were going to be Bilzamon, Bagra. And a lot of people don't put respect on Bagra because it doesn't perform that well in our regular meta, but I think it's important to note that this is partially due to the fact that it doesn't play that well into BWG. Like, it's not awful, but the DDG Evolve can cause a bit of an issue. Oh, hiccups. Excuse me. So, you know, I'll talk about Bagra in a bit. But... The biggest issue, I think, is yellow-purple, whether that be Ophanimon or Mastamon, because their low end is just going to consist of four Ignite, four Ghazi, and four Psychmon. Psychmon, I'm less concerned about because I don't need to digivolve I can just digivolve up. But Ghazi is a bit of a problem because it makes it difficult to do my tempo plays because I really do like abusing the all-turns gain a memory effect on both the Ignite and the Blue Marimon. And I can't do that um, if Ghazi is in play on my opponent's side of the field, which is also a reason that Lady Debbie is here since she allows us to pop level three cards uh, with her inheritable. It's once per turn, unfortunately, but it's still very good. It's it's still a point that uh, I actually did lose to Ofani. Game one, I think I would have lost regardless because they did have Death X in hand. I had access to Psychmon that I was going to play. Um... But I was just very out of position because they got a bunch of level 3 uh, floodgates out very quickly. And I couldn't establish enough blockers to deal with that. And I didn't want to give them too much memory, so I was choking them by playing Mimi. Um, I did have Demonic Disaster and Back for Revenge in my hand at that time because I swapped them out for Evil Squall. And if I would have had the Evil Squall, I would have been in a much better position because I could have outed their board. Same thing, um, Game 2. The game, too, was also kind of plagued by the fact that I didn't see Minerva at all. Uh, both of my Minervas were very close to the bottom of my deck, as we realized once I lost. But if I would have been able to see even one of them, and this is also the reason I wish I had three copies to begin with, um, 
every time he played a card down, I still would have been able to play a body for free, even if I wasn't gaining memory, which would have just kind of equalized the board state and forced um, him into an awkward position because he also had Psychmon out. So he couldn't play his own Death X if he wanted to. So it would have gone to a game three, and I think that game three would have been pretty interesting. So I'm probably going to like play test into his deck again at some point, just because I'm interested in seeing what happens. But uh, overall, I found this deck to be very stable, very consistent. Because even if you don't end up triggering the Eyes of On Scatter Mode effect, because you like either don't die to security or you don't have the Ignite Mon available, you can still filter via other means. And I would honestly play this in the Ultimate Cup if I had uh, been able to sign up. I just wish they would have announced beforehand that the Ultimate Cup was monocolor because that would have been my incentive for signing up for this one in particular. Um, but yeah, purple-wise, these two cards are like a constant. I think you're always going to want these no matter what if you're in a purple-specific event. And that's also part of the reason that I think the Ophanimon deck is arguably the best one if if not the most toxic one because they could just subsist on four of each of these this deck can as well i just thought that the gobblemon might have been the better play and in most cases it was so there's that just because getting the extra filter sometimes was worth it i mean you could even do something like running only 10 level uh threes and still keeping your relatively high count of fours maybe cutting back on one of these and one of these so you could run two more copies of lady devi and maybe cut an evil squall to run three copies of analog and this would be a very solid deck for just like regular events like regular ultimate cups i think it has a lot of staying power it's very mid-range really um and if need be, you can, like, combo to end the game. Because, again, you ignite. Like, you'll, you'll swing Minerva, right? You'll swing ignite, popping the Minerva, even if there's, like, nothing to kill on your opponent's board. The Minerva's effect will trigger playing the Merva, and that's three more swings. Right? But overall, you really want to have this and this out at the same time so you can get a bunch of your soul mons, have higher DP, and just overall be a menace for your opponent to deal with. Uh, the high DP thing is also very nice because you can just have the Merva, Minerva unsuspended. Since Merva herself doesn't get retaliation, she'll only be 12k, which means uh, BWG actually can't redirect her if you choose to swing at security. Like, it's really really solid i think it's very underrated and also of course if you have analog youth and you pop your own Minerva, well you gain memory for doing that you get to hatch an egg so you get to digivolve up potentially uh, but yeah overall i think the idea of this deck is very solid and i wish more people would um explore using the retail options because i think they're super good uh as for bagra Bagra's level sixes are very good. I think people underestimate them. Like Lithmon, for example, giving uh, something that your opponent moves out of raising when attacking lose three is legitimately a big threat and will cause them to stall turn. Um, Bagra itself is super threatening because if they play around the uh, removal option, you just get to rip a card out of their hand and see what all they're playing, which gives you information to better play your turn out. It's really, really good. And uh, in the event that they don't play around it, you'll oftentimes end up trashing too. Because, like, I remember I also played this in Dark Knight Mon because you can evolve on a black level 5. And um, I shoved their BWG under their Greymon, which triggered the all turns effect. So I trashed the security. And then on their turn, they digivolved up because, like, when I digivolved, my turn wasn't over yet, right? And when they digivolve up, I was able to trash another security. They outed my Bagra, but that was their last two security. And I had, I think, I had something on board, and I had a level three in raising. And even if they would have been able to kill the thing I had on board, I could have digicrossed into a Mighty Axe mode for two and just swung with the level three, and they wouldn't have been able to redirect because their uh, BWG that they ended up going into didn't have blocker sources. You know, like, it was a lot. Um, 
but yeah, the card is like even better in its own deck. Astral Snatcher is super good because it has the tuck effect, but it also puts uh, three Digimon cards, Bagra Army, in their trays from your trash under one of your Digimon uh, or Tamers. So this will actually effectively cost six because you'll put a put the three cards under you, gain a memory draw card, and then on your turn you can play something for minus six cost. If you have two U's out and you have enough sources, this can cost two. This can cost one or zero. Right? And then Tactimon and Blastmon each can cost one. Kinda nutty, honestly. Um Bagra is also a deck you could legitimately play without like really running fives. The only five that I would really run is this, and it's partially just because it gets pieces back. This card's super duper good. Um, yeah, like you don't really need to evo up a line with this deck. The only time you'd really want to do that is if you are, of course, uh, dealing with Psychmon because these, um, these two have when did evolving and on play effects and the DJ evolve from this thing is actually pretty solid uh but yeah bro really this thing in conjunction with um squall is nuts it's really good yeah i don't know i think people might need to respect this deck uh next set because the top end of the format will have less D digivolution. But I had a lot of fun with this. Uh, again, I would take this to just a monocolor event. And the build here with Analog Youth, I would take to a regular event. Mimi is a very good card. I think um, that goes without saying. Because your opponent can, like, X antibody and you can end their turn. Your opponent can, I don't know, like, Hell Scythe trying to choke you to one potentially like this is a situation i've seen before and then you meet me and go to three anyway you know your mimis immediately on suspense so you can just use your mimis to gain advantage there's a lot that goes on uh technical play wise i think with a lot of decks uh, and with this one yeah your opponent just really needs to be mindful of your board state more so than i think uh is the case generally because i've seen people misplay against this deck a lot i think because they forget that not only is minerva going to play a card for free but because my stack is usually blue mara and ignite uh i'm getting extra memory if i happen to have merva out as well i'm gaining more memory yeah um that's it for me i did this digitally uh rather than physically even though i have all the cards just so i could show those quick changes and edits um there probably are other purple decks that are worth running that i'm just blanking on but i just really kind of don't respect loops like i i respect them in the fact that they exist but i'm going to consistently put this out on board so they can't do what they want to do i'm going to consistently put this out on board um when i need to so i can't just get hit with death x right especially because this is a deck that really goes wide like Having this thing in trash and just being able to play it off of the uh, Minerva or just hard playing it out of your hand to pass turn is very good. That's all for me. Uh, hope that if we have more purple only events in the future that uh, I get to see more people play this, more variants of this potentially. Or even if we just do monocolor, uh, perhaps even just in regular Ultimate Cups, somebody running like a list like this. I would like to see variations on this as well. Uh, yeah. Peace.